Hello guys, my name is Tom Antos and in this video I wanted to show you uh, the set of new lights that I got from Came TV. Uh, these are uh, focusable, uh, you know, Fresnel LED lights uh, and what's really unique about them is that uh, they're very small. They're basically the smallest uh, Fresnels actually that I've you know, been able to find out there. So that means that I can take it with me when I'm traveling and doing some, you know, some smaller kind of jobs where uh, I don't want to haul around basically big bags with me. I can basically fit this. I can fit this actually in my camera bag because uh, when you fold the you know the barn doors in there, this is about the size of like a of like the Canon 70 to uh, 200 millimeter lens. So that's a beautiful thing about it. Uh, yet these little lights uh, give out a lot of power. So I have uh, two different versions. This is the, the um, uh, 30 watt version. There's actually a, a 55 watt version that's just a bit more powerful. So I'll show you that one uh, in a minute, but this this version basically of the light is um, oh, both of them are gonna look identical pretty much. The only difference between them is uh, the, the the ones that are 30 watt have a black uh, kind of rubber ring here. The 55 watt have a red one. Um, they're Fresnel lights. If you don't know what that means, means that they have a lens up here in the front that kind of helps you focus the light. And what that that's really good for is basically if you wanna. Uh, basically we have a stronger light output uh, especially at a further distance because you know if, uh, if you just have a light let's say uh, you know like in this one you have a really pretty powerful LED uh, element in there but if you don't focus it after a certain distance it's just the light starts getting weaker and weaker or well, by focusing it you can it kind of acts almost like like the spotlights that you see in, uh, in, in theaters you're able to throw that light really really far and without it really losing uh, that much power um, that's the reason why these little lights um, are very powerful. So uh, I actually used these in like a little setup that I did uh, with my wife, just like a little test, because I think the best way to see, you know, uh, just how any lights work is to actually light something with them and, uh, and try to get a, a shot. So I used the 30 watt version, the one that I have up here, as my key light. Uh, which maybe I should have actually used the, the stronger one, but I just wanted to see can you even use the weaker one as a key light after you have you know have it basically diffused. So uh, I shot the, the whole thing on the Panasonic GH4. Uh, just first, you know, as always, I just kind of set up my camera, uh, try to figure out more or less what the angle is. There wasn't you know anything really in that interesting uh, where we're shooting uh, to show other than this little fireplace uh, so I kind of set up the whole scene you know basically against it and I'm kind of almost making it look like a mock kind of a pretend interview um, and so if I, usually for like an interview setup I would do kind of a three light setup so I would use one light as a key light one light as a backlight and then one light as a hair light or an edge light on the on the subject so this one uh, what I basically did is I uh, set it up first, kind of figure out my angle of the light, and this is kind of how it looks when you just, you know, put that light on the on, the, on, on your subject. It's very harsh, very strong too. So I actually actually had to really, you know, put up the uh, the uh, shutter in my camera to, in order to bring the exposure down because without anything in front of it, it is very powerful. Now you can adjust with these lights the intensity of the of the light. So. Um, that's actually one thing that at first I thought it was kind of weird that it has two knobs, one for turning on and off a light and the other one is a dimmer. Usually in, in LED lights you just have one basically knob that allows you to you know, tur turn it on and then uh, the more you turn it then the more powerful it gets. Uh, so I kind of thought why have two separate knobs but it actually came in handy because the cool thing is that let's say you once you adjust your intensity and you like that setting but let's say you're running this off of batteries and then you want to shut it off in between takes so you're not wasting your battery, then you do not have to adjust that knob anymore. It means you can just turn off the light, it's off, and you know you do all your work, whatever, all, everything else that you need to do when you're ready to shoot again, you just turn it on and your dimness or your brightness of, your, of the light uh, does not change. So that's actually a pretty cool thing. Uh, another thing is, like I said, these are focusable lights, so you can focus them and the way you would do it is by turning and, and basically pulling this, this front element out. So as you adjust the, the distance of the lens to the LED light element, that's when you can focus the light more or less. So you can really see kind of how, you know, that you can almost get this sort of a spotlight effect. So as if you want that kind of an effect, then, then you, you know that you can focus it all the way and you can, we can really make it kind of look almost like, like I said, like a theater kind of lighting. 
uh, or if you just simply want that light to be powerful at a longer distance. Otherwise, you can just kind of flat it. Now, if you completely don't want to use the, uh, the Fresnel lens up here, then you can actually take that out. You just thread the front off, you take the barn doors off, and then here you basically would take out the, this element, you thread it off, and you take out the lens, and you can actually put a, just a clear piece of glass that I have up here. Um, so this will basically just protect your, you know, the LD element or, or anything from touching it, so you know you don't you don't get burned, for example. They also provide you with like a frosted piece of glass, so this glass uh, just helps you kind of diffuse the light further. Uh, also, if you want, it comes with uh, with this kind of a tungsten light because these are daylight balanced lights. So if you put this, then this will convert it to a tungsten uh, or kind of indoor lighting kind of uh, color. So that's a cool thing. You can put that in there, and that's actually what I did. So I actually put this uh, adapter to convert it to tungsten, so it gives me kind of a more warmer indoor kind of lighting. Uh, now with that, it will slightly weaken the light, but that's why for this test, I used both the tungsten filter and a diffusion in front of my light, because I wanted to see with those two things, is this so powerful enough to be used as a key light? Now you definitely do not need a low light kind of a uh, camera, uh, because uh, with this setup already, um, I was able to shoot at ISO 400. Uh, now, as you notice also, what I ended up putting in front of the light is a big uh, softbox. Uh, and you can do that because these lights, like I said, they have a thread and you can actually buy uh, from KMTV uh, a Bowens uh, light uh, or basically fixture uh, attachment adapter that you, you thread here on the front. And that looks like this. Um, you basically just thread it here on the front and you know you can attach different accessories whether it's like a dome or soft boxes or uh, uh, all kinds of things you know like a, like a snoop kind of a, you know uh, attachments things like that so that really basically just means even though that you know this light is very small you can attach all the all those you know sort of typical lighting accessories that, that you'll find out there so that's what i did i attached a soft box in front of this uh, and with the soft box and the tungsten filter still a shooting, shooting at ISO 400, I was able to get this nice exposure. So once I had my uh, key light uh, sort of in position and adjusted properly, then I wanted to add uh, sort of an edge light uh, on my wife uh, to kind of help separate her from the background. So I added another one of these lights. Now this is the 55 watt version, which you can tell, like I said, because of the red ring. Uh, and with this light, uh, it was actually turned out to be way too powerful, uh, even for an edge light, which I kind of wanted it to be strong, but it just became way, way too strong compared to, to the other light. Um, uh, but anyways, I put this light, I kind of put it behind there, I put it as far back as I could, basically it was right up against the wall. And I had it at all the way at the dimmest setting, and it, this is still how powerful basically this light was. And even then, actually, I had to still kind of point the center of the light sort of away because otherwise it was just completely blowing out uh, the, the, the hair basically and, and the, the edge on her shoulder. Um, so definitely this 55 watt version is, uh, is very powerful, you know, or like I said, definitely can be used for, uh, I would say for a key light simply because like I said, the weaker version can, can do that already. Now, what are the main differences aside from the strength? Like I said, this one is, uh, you know, 55 watts, this one's 30 watts. Uh, and this one has the red ring, this one has the black sort of rubber ring on the front. Other than that, really there are no differences. They're the same size, both of the lights. Uh, they both have, you know, the two kind of knobs here for on and off and then the dimmer. They have a little digital display here in the back that will show you, um, you know, basically different uh, settings basically that you have. And they also both have here actually a battery attachment so you can uh, connect uh, Sony NPF style batteries, which are great because they're, you know, cheap and easily available uh, and you can actually power these lights for uh, well depending on what, what size of batteries you get uh, you can power it for a decent amount of time like with the I think it was a 970 size battery uh, I was able to almost at 100% setting I was able like most of the time I was able to power this for like an hour and a half and so that's a great thing because it just means that you can you know take this with you on location and especially because they're so small easy to pack and light uh, and they can be battery operated they also come with a cable, actually, that's a, a P-TAP to mini uh, XLR power cable, 4-pin XLR cable, which is what you would connect up here. Uh, and they also come with a standard uh, AC plug, so you can plug it to an outlet. But if you're on location and you want to, let's say, power it off of a bigger battery, like um, V-Mount or Anton Bauer or anything really that has a P-TAP connection, then uh, you can also power these lights off of that. So that's a great thing. Anyways, so I used this light, like I said, the more powerful as the edge light. 
Uh, now, because I did not put any filters on there, so it's basically balanced to uh, uh, daylight, it just simply means that it's going to be giving me a lot bluer light compared to uh, my key light. And since I adjusted my white balance on my camera to tungsten, it means that this light turned out to be very blue, which I, I kind of liked. So that gives me the kind of a strong blue edge light. And then uh, the final light that I end up adding in my little test scene is uh, another one of these bolts and lights. And I just put it in there, kind of focusing in on the, um, on the fireplace behind my wife. And, uh, and that's kind of more or less the shot that I, that I got with these lights. And now another little thing I just wanted to say is the major really difference, aside from, like I said, the strength between these two versions, is the fact that this one, because it is more powerful, it generates more heat. So it has an internal fan to kind of help cool off the light. These ones, the 30 watt versions, don't have it. Uh, so the fan, uh, just keep in mind that if, if you wanted to put it like really close to an actor, let's say, or microphone, uh, you might pick up some slight noise. I mean, it is very, very quiet, I'll just tell you that. Uh, so I would say anything more than like two or three feet, you're not gonna hear really that, that, that fan. But if you go up close to it, then yes, uh, you will feel, you will hear a little bit of a kind of a wind noise or fan noise. Uh, so that's really the only difference. So uh, depending on which version you want, like I said, it's uh, just you know, something to consider. Overall, I, you know, I, like I said, so far I haven't had a chance to use these lights yet on a job, so I can't give you like a, a real production experience or just how well these are going to hold up for when you're using them for a few months on actual jobs. But so far, I mean, they seem sturdy. They come with all the things they need. They come with little actually bags, uh, which is great. Uh, they hold all the accessories, filters and everything for these. Um, and, uh, and, you know, they're affordable. Uh, they, you know, you can attach all the professional accessories, things like that, and they, you can power them off of batteries. So I'm, I'm so far very happy with these lights. And now, if there is anything negative that I could say, uh, really, the only thing is that when I attached my big, which is a really, really big and heavy uh, softbox in the front of this light, uh, it basically was too much weight for this light to actually hold that weight. And so, basically, what ended up happening is that this light kept on falling forward. Uh, and I could not, doesn't matter how hard I tried, I couldn't tighten it until I basically I kept on turning this knob and I actually, I think I damaged the thread here in my, uh, on this side of the light here. So I cannot actually tighten this. It just keeps on turning now, you see. Because I kept on tightening, tightening, and then I just heard something <coughs> break and uh, I think. So that's something to keep in mind is if you're going to put a really big accessory here in the front, because these are very small lights, uh, there's basically nothing, you know, like, there's no big counterweight or anything in the back to hold that weight. So in the end, I just ended up taking my giant softbox and kind of leaning it up against the ceiling uh, or some things that were sticking out from the ceiling. And that's how I was able to set it up. Another thing you could do is just put up like another stand under your softbox or accessory that you're going to put in the front. That's the only thing. Um, but it's like I said, it's not a, not a deal breaker, and at least not for me, considering the fact that these are nice and small lights. Um, so anyways, if you guys are interested, if you want to uh, find out where you can get these lights, check all the links in the description of this video, or as always, go to my website at tomatosfilms.com. Anyways, thank you guys, and uh, I'll see you next time.